what are the most common symptoms that someone might be experiencing if they have low testosterone? And are there any, you mentioned before that a lot of these symptoms, there, there are kind of a slew of things that could cause yeah. those. Are there any that are a little more clearly indicative of low testosterone? Unfortunately not. I wish, you know, because I would say like libido and erection quality are probably some of the ones that most people would assume. But, you know, libido, that's so psychological, probably more than anything. Erection quality, I would argue, like, you know, having ED in this country is more associated with atherosclerosis than it is hormones. Um, so. <laughs> it's one of the first, uh, I think, reasons why a lot of men with cardiovascular disease go to see their doctor. Absolutely. But most people, nobody wants to hear it's your cholesterol. They want to hear it's your testosterone. Give me a shot. Um, but yeah, we're talking, you know, libido, poor erection quality, being fatigued, putting on body fat, having a hard time putting on muscle, um, lower, like poor mood, brain fog. But I'm sure you could have just listed off five things for each of those that it could also be. So it's very hard. Unfortunately, there's not one thing that it's like, oh, this is 100% testosterone. Right. So it's this combination of understanding where your testosterone level is currently at, total mm -hmm. and free. How are you feeling? The combination of those two things. Are there any other hormones that that someone would be testing at the same time to get a kind of better understanding as yeah. to you know whether the, the the experience, how they're feeling subjectively, is a kind of sex hormone issue, and they should pursue some type of hormone optimization yeah i mean if they're doing their due diligence which is another thing you know oftentimes they'll just pull the testosterone and that's not ideal in my opinion we have other things like thyroid uh prolactin is a big one that a lot of people probably never had their prolactin tested uh, prolactin high prolactin feels a lot like low testosterone so the symptoms of high prolactin are low libido poor erection quality delayed orgasm low motivation prolactin is our like direct uh kind of suppressor of dopamine so you know when a man has an orgasm i think every man has experienced this when right afterwards suddenly you lose all libido everything just turns off you're like whoa okay you know you just want to be left alone that's mediated via prolactin so some guys have elevated prolactin for multiple different reasons drugs like ss or rise can cause it. There's some thought that foods like dairy can cause elevations of prolactin. Marijuana, THC can cause elevations of prolactin. A lot of guys have a high level of prolactin, which is suppressing dopamine, and they're inappropriately thinking it's their testosterone when it's their prolactin. Um, conversely, if you have a low thyroid, you have high levels of TSH and you have high levels of thyrotropin releasing hormone, which also stimulate prolactin. So sometimes it's a thyroid issue and you have low energy because of the thyroid, you have low libido because the thyroid is stimulating prolactin. So all of these hormones are so complex that it's a lot more than, you know, spitting a saliva test of testosterone, sending it off to a clinic and they send you, you know, a TRT script. Mm -hmm. You mentioned hypogonadism Yeah, before, low testosterone. Right, low testosterone. Um, I've, I've seen people talking about primary and mm -hmm. secondary. Yeah. What are the differences between those? And when might someone order lab tests looking at, I think, LH and FSH, those two hormones right. you mentioned before, which are produced by the pituitary gland, gland they, they stimulate these the cells in the testes yeah. to produce sperm and to produce testosterone. Um, so big question there, but what's the difference between primary and secondary hypogonadism? And when, if at all, would you test um, LH and FSH? I think you always should if you're looking at testosterone because you definitely want the whole picture. So to break down the, or to separate primary from secondary, primary is there's an issue in the testes. So the signal is there, the LH and FSH are there. They're sending the signal, the testy isn't responding. So something is wrong with the testy and the testicular cells. So that's primary hypogonadism. Secondary would be there's an issue in the either hypothalamus or pituitary, your LH and FSH are suppressed and you're not producing the testosterone. So then you could get your testosterone up by another signaling molecule potentially. Mm -hmm. Right. So out of the two of those is secondary easier to treat than primary? Yeah. Yeah. Because I mean, you can at least stimulate the testes to keep producing sperm or sperm or testosterone, but you can't, if your testes won't make testosterone, they just won't make testosterone. Mm -hmm. No. Got you. And what kind of compounds would, would kind of 
act as LH and FSH will stimulate the production of those. So yeah, we have, that's a good differentiation. We either have ones that act or mimic, which would be HCG is the main one, human chorionic gonadotropin hormone produced mainly in pregnant females. Very small micro amount is produced in men as well, but that in men mainly acts as an LH mimetic or a mimic. So it mimics LH, it binds to LH receptors and stimulates Leydig cells to produce testosterone. Or you have other drugs like CIRM, selective estrogen receptor modulators, which work to bind to estrogen receptors in the hypothalamus of pituitary and um, cause a, it kind of suppresses the feedback loop. So we should talk about how our, our brain senses it needs to produce testosterone, which is mainly through estrogen. To go back to my argument of how important estrogen is, our brain doesn't really care where the levels of testosterone is, but if estrogen gets too low, that's when we start producing testosterone. So our brain is sensing via the estrogen receptor for levels of estrogen in the hypothalamus and pituitary. Um, when our estrogen is too low, that's when the hypothalamus and pituitary start producing LH and FSH. So drugs like CIRMs block the estrogen receptor up here in the brain, kind of trick your brain into thinking estrogen is very low, and they flip the switches of testosterone production on. So LH and FSH start being produced. So that's, is, is that Clomid? Is that one of Clomid, those? Clomid, yeah. It's like Clomid. The popular, I've been on Reddit before this, yeah. and I, all this stuff, half my questions are from Reddit, guys. Yeah. Clomid, <laughs> Clomid is the original, like one that people use. Nowadays, we use in Clomiphene a lot more. Okay. So Clomid is a a combination of inclomiphene and zooclomiphene. Um, the zooclomiphene aspect is anti-androgenic of sorts, so it, it can cause some lower testosterone symptoms. It also is associated with a lot more of the side effects. So we've kind of synthesized out this inclomiphene. People use that a lot more because it's mainly just driving up testosterone. So when you go, like if you have low testosterone and you, you present as someone with low testosterone, low libido, um, low energy, you, you run your tests, testosterone's low. Do, do clinics offer like some of these compounds? Like, w is there, is there an, a scenario where someone takes a compound like HCG to essentially get the body, what I'm hearing to produce its own testosterone yeah, to get you into a, a normal range versus adding exogenous testosterone they do yeah and actually i think those compounds are more expensive than testosterone so sometimes they may offer that first and maybe it's more money maker uh, but they do and a lot of guys especially younger guys usually sub 30 who still care about fertility that don't want suppression they're going to opt for more of one of those either hcg or a serm or a combination of the both to try to preserve or stimulate uh, testicular function mm -hmm.